Hi folks, in this video we're going to be taking a look at prediction and confidence intervals in regression. Now in the last couple of videos we've been working through an example using simple linear regression. And that example was, to refresh your memory, an example having to do with a fictional basketball team, their shooting percentage, um, and how it can predict points scored. At the end of our last video on analyzing regression outputs, we used shooting percentage to predict a value for points scored. I actually don't remember if that was the end of the video that we did that, but we said what would be our predicted points scored using a shooting percentage of 47. Now, just as a quick refresher, let's get back to where we were before. I'm going to uh, go ahead and run a regression using this data here. So I'll go to in Excel, data, data analysis, select regression, it knows where I'm going. All right, my input range is here. This is my dependent variable point scored. My input range is here. Shooting percentage, that's predicting point scored. I've, I'm using labels because I've got the, uh, my first row here is de devoted to labeling the data. And let's go ahead and run this thing. Now this time I put my summary output here on the same sheet. And what we said was, okay, if, let me bring this up one actually. Now we can see everything. If we had a shooting percentage of 47, what would we predict as the value for points scored for this team? Well, that's pretty easy to do. We just use the coefficients that we retrieved from regression. So we say, okay, there's a, uh, an intercept of negative 19.57. Add that to the shooting percentage coefficient and multiply that by the shooting percentage we're interested in using as a predictor. So we're using 47% shooting. And that told us that we could expect the team to score about 103 points if they're shooting 47%. Now, does that mean that they're actually likely to score 103 points? No. It's just our expected value. Um, and, you know, we can be... It's, it's our best guess, but, you know, when you look at a, a cloud of data doing regression, when you get that scatter plot and you draw your best fit line through it, how often does that line actually hit a data point? Sometimes, maybe. Not, not tremendously often. So this is a, our best guess, but we're not, we don't actually think we're going to get 103 points. This is where, what takes us to our prediction intervals. We can actually, using what we know of statistics and the data we've gotten from this regression, make a prediction interval around how many points the team will score if they shoot 37, 47%. And we could do that with an equation. I'm going to get to now. All right, so this is, what you see on the right here, is the equation that gives the standard error for the prediction of a single observation of y. Now, this is not what's going to give us the, it's, it's a part of what's going to give us the prediction interval centered around uh, 103, you know, 103.06 points. I'm going to go ahead and write that down, actually. God, worst why ever. Just so we don't forget it. All right, so... This is a complex looking equation. What it's going to give us is the standard error of our prediction. And we're going to use that. We're going to incorporate a, a t value and our expected value for y based on our prediction. And we're going to get a range. You know, and, and it'll, it'll vary according to the level of confidence we want. This is just a confidence interval. But let's work through this equation because there's stuff in there you might not necessarily have seen before. All right, so to begin with, we have the standard error. That's something that we, we talked about in our last video. It's listed right here standard error of our regression. So I'll go ahead and write that in five point one four three. We also have n, that's the number of observations, that's twenty. That's we just have twenty observations here, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, what is x n plus 1. Well, that just means that's 
the value that we're looking for. This is this additional value we're trying to predict or predict a range for now. Um, so that's just that in this case it'll be 47. And then we have x bar, which is the average value of x. Well, that's not something that's given to us, I don't think, in our regression output. So we're going to have to go ahead and calculate that. So I'm going to write in over here equals average. Grab all my x values, all my data points for x. So we have x n plus 1 now is equal to 47 x bar is equal to 45.2. What's this down here? Well, this is s squared x. You may remember seeing this from a previous video. Um, this says, uh, this is the variance of the sample for x. So this is, this is a sample right here. All these values of x are a sample. And we're looking for the variance of that. So again, we have to do a calculation. So we say equals variance. Var dot s is the variance of a sample. Go ahead and grab all these again. Whoops, more than I need. Let's get back up there. Okay, so h2 to h21, variance s is 12.69. So s. And why is it written as s squared? Well, that's because s is the symbol for standard deviation of a sample. And as you know very well, variance is the square of a standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of a variance. So that's 12.69 and n plus 1. Well, we already have n. OK, so we have all the elements we need. I'm going to spare you putting you through all of the calculations here and just give you the answer, which I wrote down somewhere. All right, the answer is 5.304. Might as well use green. Now, as a final sanity check with your prediction interval, uh, your, your standard error of your prediction, the standard error of your prediction should be slightly larger than the standard error of your regression. And that's what we see here. So, okay, that's you know it's a little bit above the standard error for the regression. So that checks out. That's what we would expect. All right, now we're not done. This is just the standard error of our prediction. It doesn't actually give us a, uh, a confidence interval. And so we have this. This is good. It's sort of the most complex part. But uh, we we need to uh, first of all, if we're going to do a confidence level or or prediction uh, in interval in this case. We need to have some level of confidence. So let's go ahead and say 95%. We want to be. We want to know the range around this prediction where we can say with 95% confidence, if the team shoots 47%, they're going to score between this lower bound and this upper bound. 95% chance they're going to be within this range. Maybe we're betting on a sports book. I don't know. That's don't do that. I guess. Um, okay. So. When we're doing that, we, have, we start off with our expected value for y, our predicted value, I should actually say. Our predicted value for y is, oh, I'm going back to red now. I don't know why. 103.306 plus or minus. We need a certain number of standard deviations that are going to match that confidence. And so we can do that. If we're... If we want to be 95% confidence, we're actually going to use plus or minus, I don't know why I went over to that screen already, t, we say our alpha divided by 2, our alpha for 95% confidence is 0.05, and divided by 2, because we, this is a two-tailed, it's, it's a confidence interval, we always divide alpha by 2, it's going to be 0.025, hope that makes sense to everybody, 95% confidence, so there's 2.5% uncertainty on one side, 2.5% uncertainty on the other side. And we have to have a certain number of degrees of freedom. In this case, it's n minus 2. Whenever we're dealing with simple linear regression, your degrees of freedom, it actually says it right here, degrees of freedom 18, um, we subtract 1 for the coefficient of the intercept, 1 for the coefficient of the shooting of the um, uh, the predictor variable. If we have multiple predictor variables, we subtract 1 for every predictor variable. So in this case, it's going to be n minus 2. So that is 18. 
And then you multiply that times this number that we just calculated, the standard error of the prediction, 5.304. All right, so I'm guessing my T table does not have uh, 18 degrees of freedom, so I'm going to use Excel to calculate that. So we say T inv, T dot inv. Wait, is that what I want? No, I want T inv. This is always going to be a two-tailed test. So it says, if you can't read this, it says the function is available for whatever. It returns the two-tailed inverse of the student's T distribution. So we say the probability is 0 0.05 degrees of freedom is 18. That should give me something like 2. Yes, okay, good. Glad everything's working out. So we say 103.306 plus or minus 2.1. We'll say 2.101 since we're getting down to the thousandth place times 5.304. What the heck, let's go ahead and do this. This is our lower bound. Just gonna use the same equation, but switch the use minus sign to a plus sign, and that's our upper bound. So we have a range from 91.362 to 114.980. That's our 95% confidence interval for the prediction of a single observation of why if the shooting percentage is 47%. This would change if we had a different shooting percentage, obviously. Okay, so that's our confidence on a single prediction. Now we're going to shift gears and talk about something else. The standard error for the expected value of y at x n plus 1. This is something a little bit different. Now we're talking about the confidence interval for the expected value of y. So actually, let me go back to the first slide. We were talking about prediction and confidence intervals in regression. You, you say you have a, I mean, essentially all we're talking about is confidence intervals. I mean, we know that. But for this first example, we were looking for the confidence around which we could predict a single instance of y. Here we're talking about the confidence that we can say the actual expected value of y. We're using a new equation. We're going to say, what's, the, what's our confidence around the actual expected value of y at x equals 47? It's going to be actually a narrower range. We're going to see why. OK, so let's take a look at this equation. It should look familiar, except in, in the sense that I actually wrote it neater the second time around. But it looks very similar to this equation here, the, the, the equation in blue. The only difference you will note if I flip back and forth quickly is that this one begins with, for, for the, a single observation, the, the standard error begins with 1 plus 1 over n, and then it has all this. Oops. This equation just begins with 1 over n, and then it has the exact same thing with, in, underneath the square root. So it's just a, a it's, it, just the difference, it's a difference of 1. That's all. So um, I'm not going to put you through everything I did last time. I'm just going to give you the answer. And since I wrote it in green last time, I'm going to read it, write it in green again. Our standard error for the prediction of the expected value of y at x equals 47 is 1.295. Now, let's go ahead and come up with a confidence interval around the expected value of y. So now we've still got our predicted value does not change, 103.306 plus or minus, we're going to still use 95% confidence, and so we're still going to use 2.101, So we have the exact same number of degrees of freedom, same level, same alpha, same level of confidence. And now we're multiplying that. that this is our number of standard deviations, and now our standard times our standard error, 1.295. 
I gotta go back to uh, back to here. Oh, nice. I'm only gonna have to replace the standard air. We get a narrower range for our confidence around the expected value. Let's think about whether that makes sense. It's considerably narrower range. Our confidence interval, oh, I didn't use the same colors, shucks. Our confidence interval around a, predicting a single instance of Y was quite a bit broader. We went from 91 to 115 versus our expected value, or our confidence around what we think the expected value of y is at x equals 47 is 100.5 to 106, a lot narrower. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and, and here's why. It's because we have all this data. We have 20 points of data that allow us to kind of come up with an expected value for y at x equals 47. Points scored versus shooting at a percentage of 47% from the field. We have all this data, but we're still going to be much more uncertain about a single instance. If we're saying one single, you know, predicting one score on a night when you shoot 47%, you know, there could, that particular score could be an anomaly. That could be a weird game. So there's going to be this big range that, you know, for, for our 95% confidence. But when we're talking about an expected value, then we're just essentially saying, how confident are we about the data that we have thus far. We're dealing with 20 points of data as opposed to just saying, well, there's 20 points of data and then this single instance that could give us, you know, who knows what. It could be a really weird night where, you know, the other team commits a million turnovers and so even though we shoot lousy, we score a whole lot of points because uh, we have so many possessions. That's, uh, that's, that's the way to think about this. So hopefully that all makes sense to you and that's all we're going to devote to uh, predict prediction intervals and confidence intervals around expected values of y and single instances of y for regression.